March 12th, 2017. Updates to Fred the Dalek. Uh, I've taken the uh, breadboarding work that was done in the last uh, by last week uh, and uh, packaged it into this uh, handy dandy handheld unit. This is a $10 ex enclosure but it's a very good quality. I think somebody bought too many of them for some commercial product and they're now all over the internet but ten dollars the thing is actually weather tight or it was before I drilled holes in it uh, so what we have is we have uh, the 1602 mounted up here it's clamped in place uh, this thing actually has a plastic shield on the front um, my existing uh, keypad with the MCP 23008 backpack with the funny wiring uh, is here so the wires are flipped on that cable I've added one of my uh, Born's Ace128 adapters here so I can do a remote control and remote setting of the the head, not necessarily headset but certainly control do some manual adjustment and so forth or remote control um, so that's the three items are on the I2C those come into a distributor here uh, which goes into a RG45 jack which uh, we just moved to office and there was a bunch of these in the scrap bin so I grabbed one and that's just hot glued down to the board. This enclosure actually has three places to uh, screw down circuit boards so it's uh, very good. You get a whole Arduinos in these. Let me get some more for other projects. Uh, and that's it. It all uh, goes together and it all just works. Now I'm going to try something I haven't tried yet. I think this is a 7 foot ethernet cable. Uh, running to the Arduino so we'll just uh, unplug our power take that out put that to one side and this here is a 50 foot flat ribbon ethernet cable that I picked up from some other office move years ago I don't even know if this cable works but it is 50 feet long so if we can run I2C over 50 feet that will be awesomely cool so let's just plug it in and see what happens. Uh, it works! It works! It freaking works! Who says you can't run I2C long distance? So the trick here, I, I did this originally with the Dalek because I was being over cautious. And I think this may be a, a tip for others because 50 feet on I2C and it just works. Um, what I do is within your standard Ethernet uh, cable, I believe this is Cat5, uh, you have four twisted pairs uh, which are normally used for uh, carrying signals. Each pair has a solid color and a striped color. And the idea is that because they're twisted together and the current's running in opposite directions, you're going to have, uh, it's not going to radiate any uh, electricity, any electromagnetic outside itself because they cancel each other out and that way you don't get crosstalk between the wires which is what kills your I2C at long long range. So what I do is I twist all of the stripe wires are ground and the brown and the stripe brown are also ground and then the orange is uh, VCC and then the other two are, I think I do blue for SCL and what's the other color? Um, green for SDA. Uh, and those are twisted together with a uh, ground. And here it is. It goes 50 feet. 50 feet of I2C. Look at this. It's ridiculous. It died. Oh, I pulled the cable out. Do 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 do. Okay, let's plug it back in. Da -da -da -da. Plug it back in. There we go. Plug it back in. Uh, reset the Arduino. Exterminate all humans. Cool. Knob. Twiddle.